This is New 7's Late Report. Good evening. Hurricane Kate dwindled to a tropical storm this afternoon. Kate plowed across Georgia earlier in the day, and flash flood waters remain posted for parts of the Atlantic coast. More from southern Florida with John Axel. Florida Governor Bob Graham okay. making a personal survey of Hurricane Kate's damage. Damage so widespread it ravaged large portions of two states, forcing hundreds of thousands to evacuate and costing hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. Now, Gulf Coast areas knew they would be hard hit, and they were. Apalachicola took the full brunt of Kate's fury. A water tower toppled in the high winds. Many small craft were destroyed. Hundreds of buildings were damaged. It was the second major hurricane to hit here this year, testing the metal of coastal residents. We have no roof. <laughs> and the sides crushed in, and we've got two big limbs inside the living room. Panama City was more fortunate, but Kate left her calling card here, too. More damage, more loss. This $300,000 sailboat, just one example. Kate didn't stop at the Gulf Coast. She roared inland on a northeast course, up through the Florida Panhandle, through Tallahassee, into South Georgia, through the state of Georgia, and back out to sea. Along the way, she spawned dozens of tornadoes, which downed tens of thousands of trees, some uprooted, others broken off like matchsticks. Those trees brought down power and phone lines, leaving huge chunks of North Florida and South Georgia without electricity. There was a mad scramble whenever gasoline could be found, since almost all outlets need electricity to power their pumps. Areas around Tallahassee were very hard hit. This warehouse hit by a twister. Power may not be restored to some areas here for a week to 10 days. Only one radio station is operating. Another lost its 440-foot tower to the high winds. There is so little electricity, so many water problems and traffic problems, so much confusion, that Tallahassee and Leon County have imposed a 7 p.m. curfew on all streets to discourage looters and sightseers. For CBS News, Jim Axel in Tallahassee. A five-year-old Watertown boy was admitted for injuries he received late this afternoon when he was run over by a truck on the city's north side. Police say Stanley David Conway of 514 Lansing Street was pinned beneath the rear tires of a truck used to carry roof trusses. The youngster apparently ran in front of the vehicle across East Main Street at the corner of Lansing. The driver, Scott Backus, was not charged. Conway is listed in stable condition at Mercy Hospital. Authorities reported a number of other minor accidents as the season's first snowfall swept into the North Country this afternoon. Flight service at Watertown's airport report about an inch and a half of snow has fallen thus far. But the wet, heavy snow required plows and sanders on area highways. Authorities warned of hazardous driving conditions, and some drivers were, of course, unprepared for the quickly changing road conditions, finding themselves into guardrails and ditches. One accident requiring some medical attention happened early this afternoon near Belleville on Route 289. Two women were slightly injured when their car skidded off their road and hit. Uh, wrapped, the car was wrapped around a utility pole. State police tonight report a few more minor fender benders in the North Country. Although driving conditions have generally improved since this afternoon, authorities recommend caution when traveling on roads tonight. In Washington, President Reagan returned to work at the White House today and briefed his cabinet on the week's events. CBS News correspondent Gary Schuster reports. It was back to work today for President Reagan. At a cabinet meeting to brief his department heads on the Geneva summit, he said if the meeting accomplished nothing else, he hopes it eliminated Soviet mistrust on security issues. The going to an arms negotiation, uh, uh, if both sides are still suspicious, then you know that both sides are still trying to s protect any advantage they can. If you can really eliminate the suspicions, you both go into the meeting seeing no particular need for maintaining uh, this great military strength. The president is said to have been encouraged by the Soviets agreeing to a joint statement in Geneva calling for a 50% reduction in nuclear arms without tying it to the U.S. ending its space-based missile defense plan. But did he read that as the Soviets softening on dislike of the strategic defense initiative? Not on that issue, no. However, Mr. Reagan said the fact that the two men pledged to keep in touch on issues left unresolved at the summit indicates a willingness, as he put it, to get things straightened out. Gary Schuster, CBS News, the White House. The first step towards resolving future garbage disposal in this area came today in a vote by the Jefferson County Solid Waste Advisory Committee. The committee endorsed the concept of a waste-to-energy plant which would serve Jefferson and Lewis counties. 
Chairman John Morja hailed the vote as, quote, a great step forward. Now it's up to the city of Watertown and the towns of the two counties to throw their support into the project. The Army and the Fort Drum Steering Council will also be consulted. If everyone agrees to the project, it will be pursued by the Development Authority of the North Country. Presently, there are 11 landfills now operating in Jefferson County, but six of these will have to close in 1987. On November 21st, 1985, a complaint was filed in the U.S. Federal Court charging an employee of the U.S. Navy with a violation of U.S. Code Title 18, Section 794 under the Espionage Act. In 1933, Hess began with one little truck. Back then, a child could only dream of owning one like that. Today, every child can have a sturdy replica of the first Hess truck with doors that open and close, six real rubber wheels, Real lights, front and back, and a bank in the tank where your child can start saving toward his dreams. Get this fully assembled Hess toy truck, ever ready, battery included, for $3.99 at Hess gasoline stations. Season's greetings from the people at Hess. Watch out, it's coming. You're about to get hit with another big heating bill. <laughs> Afraid of high fuel costs? Dave Lennox has a pulse gas furnace that could cut your winter heating bills almost in half. Had a boy, Dave. Here's my friend Rod Murray of Eon Heating. We're proud to be handling the world's most efficient furnace. Give us a call so we can make your home more energy efficient. You can find your nearby independent Lennox dealer under the Lennox trademark in the furnace or air conditioning section of your yellow pages. Hi, I'm Howard from Hal Electric, and as you can see, we have the largest video and TV showroom in northern New York. If you are confused by technical jargon, Visit us at Halley Electric and we will help you through the technical jungle. We carry the full lines of Xena, GE, Magnavox, Sylvania, and Gold Star. And don't forget, we service what we sell. Come on down, get the straight story from me, Howard, from Halley Electric. Halley Electric, 247 Factory Street. Santa's elves are watching. I hope you've been good. Santa's made Morrison's your official Christmas store. And to help you with your Christmas shopping, Morrison's is sending you two holiday circulars. Both are filled with ideas to give your home that special holiday magic that will last all year. Now, with the purchase of $149, Morrison's has a Christmas gift for you. Elegant entertaining made easy. No wonder Santa made Morrison's your number one furniture store. Special Envoy from Britain's Archbishop of Canterbury, Terry Waite, said today that he's made some progress in his negotiations to free the American hostages in Beirut. But Waite had to delay his departure from Beirut for the U.S. because of fierce fighting in the city. Waite was trapped in his hotel for a second day by the battles. In fact, the Hotel Commodore at times became the battleground itself. Waite was supposed to leave for New York for talks with American politicians and clerics on his negotiations with the kidnappers. The fighting is called by some the fiercest ever in the city. At least 35 people have died in two days. Potsdam legislator Rosemary Sanford will be the first woman to chair the St. Lawrence County Board of Legislators. Sanford was selected in a closed-door caucus of Republican legislators last night. And former legislative clerk Eileen Petrie of Canton has been tapped as the appointee to replace John Kroll as county administrative assistant. Kroll will take a position as commissioner of planning and economic development in Broome County. Those appointments are expected to become official at the legislature's organizational meeting in January. In Washington today, State Department spokesman Charles Redmond acknowledged that the United States Navy analyst Jonathan Pollard has been accused of possibly selling military secrets to Israel. Redmond acknowledged that Pollard is being charged under federal statutes but offered few other details. On November 21st, 1985, a complaint was filed in the U.S. Federal Court charging an employee of the U.S. Navy with a violation of U.S. Code Title 18, Section 794 under the Espionage Act. This section deals with the passing of national defense information to a foreign power or agent. In view of the fact that he was arrested leaving the Israeli Embassy, the circumstances concerning his presence at this location are being actively investigated at this time. We are shocked and saddened at the notion that something like this might occur. We have been in touch with the Israelis to try to get to the bottom of this. We don't have all the facts. Since this remains an active investigation, further comment concerning the involvement of a particular foreign government 
would be inappropriate until all of the specific facts are known. The wife of Jonathan Pollard has now also been taken into custody. The State Agriculture Commissioner Joseph Girassi says he's opposed to a plan to increase farmland property tax valuations. The State Board of Equalization and Assessment has proposed a new schedule of land values that would raise the average farmland assessment by about 30 percent. A hearing was held today in Albany on the proposal. Reports indicate all testimony, including Jirasi's, was against the plan. Jefferson County Farm Bureau President Ed Waldrop says the tax increase is a threat to the uh, agriculture industry in New York State. The government released its Consumer Price Index report for October today. CBS News correspondent Douglas Edwards reports. The department reported consumer prices rose a modest three-tenths of one percent last month. This was led by higher prices for food and 1986 automobiles. The rise in food costs, which includes beverages, was due mainly to a higher federal excise tax on alcohol, which took effect October 1st. And newly introduced 1986 model cars replaced discounted 1985 models in dealer showrooms. This accounted for much of the overall rise in the transportation category. Auto insurance costs and refinancing charges were also up last month. The October increase brought inflation for the first 10 months of 1985 to 3.3% when figured on an annual basis. If that rate holds for the rest of the year, 1985 could have the lowest rate of inflation since 1967. But a separate report showing wholesale prices sharply higher in October could dash hopes for an 18-year low in the inflation rate. Wholesalers usually pass their higher costs on to customers, and economic forecasters expect that's exactly what will happen before the year runs out. Douglas Edwards, CBS News, New York. For the finest Thanksgiving feast ever, the Price Champion is on your side with everything you need to make it a memorable event. P&C has the right turkey at the right price. And from our farm fresh vegetables to our sun-drenched fruit, count on the Price Champion for quality and freshness. For all your holiday entertaining needs, P&C is fully stocked and ready to serve you. From our family to yours, the warmest wishes for a festive Thanksgiving holiday. Since 1903, we've served our friends and neighbors. At Kinney Drugs, we're here to serve you. With the reliability of our computerized pharmacy and with a friendly smile at the checkout counter, come on into Kinney Drugs. We really hope you do. Kinney's family pride is showing. It's shining through for you. The car capital of northern New York, always loaded with a changing variety of quality used cars. 84 Buick Estate Wagon loaded. 84 Buick LeSabre four-door loaded. 82 Chevy Camaro automatic tilt and cruise. 82 Chevy Camaro V6 automatic. 83 Buick Skyhawk four-door four-speed. 84 Pontiac Trans Am T-top loaded. It's always time to check out the used car selection at Greenwood Buick Honda GMC Trucks out of Washington Street, Watertown. Whirlpool appliance dealer today and enter the Whirlpool makes it easier sweepstakes. You could win a trip for two to London and Paris. Win a new Whirlpool appliance or buy one now with no money down and no payments for 90 days. Easy appliance financing, great sweepstakes prices. See your Whirlpool dealer today. It's easy. In Watertown, see Watertown TV and Appliance. In Audensburg, see Quickner Mattress. It was 22 years ago today that America watched President Kennedy being gunned down in Dallas by Lee Harvey Oswald. The day of the tragedy still has the power to shock and horrify us, to fill us with the same sense of tremendous loss. Thousands of people lined the route of the motorcade, cheering as the presidential convertible passed. It's top down. As the motorcade passed the Texas Book Depository, three shots were fired. It wasn't long before the world learned that Kennedy was dead. By evening, 24-year-old Lee Harvey Oswald was in custody, a drifter who had defected to the Soviet Union after serving in the United States Marines, but who later returned to affiliate with a pro-Castro group. But Oswald never got the chance to tell his tale. Two days later, as he was being transferred from a prison, he was gunned down by Jack Ruby. 
The Green Berets laid a wreath in honor of President Kennedy at the JFK Memorial in Dallas today. Hey, let me see. Oh, soft. And no static gling. How'd you get it that way? Bold 3, thank you. A detergent. My liquid can't do all that. Well, Bold 3 has built-in fabric softener. Boy, I'd love it in liquid. We made it in liquid. Introducing new liquid Bold 3. A stain-fighting detergent and a full-strength fabric softener combined in a unique new liquid formulation. You liquid Bold even cleans gravy stains. Bold 3. You'll love it in liquid. But wait. Mm, my regular detergent never softened. Get a load of this thickness. Bold 3. You'll love it in liquid. And static? Hey, it's under control. Bold 3 detergent plus fabric softener. You'll love it in liquid. As you I took my biology degree and put it to work in the Peace Corps. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Shooters, the unique gathering place in Ogdensburg, has extended their menu. Now, along with their terrific adult menu, they have a full range of kids' meals that kids really like. And all this month, your little shooters can have their choice for only 99 cents. 99 cents for any meal off the kids' menu. For adults, they're offering a dollar off any of their delicious fresh chicken sandwiches. Come to Shooters for a uniquely delicious dining experience. Shooters on Canton Street, Ogdensburg. When the snow piles up, blast it away fast and easy with a rugged Gilson snow thrower. Pound for pound, the compact Gilson snow cannon beats everything in its class. Or move up to two-stage performance with the Gilson 5 horse. And to bust through the deepest drifts, get your hands on a big Gilson 8 or 10 horse. Remember, when the storm warnings are up, count on Gilson, America's best buy. Available at the Saw Barn, Evansville, Jones Farm Supply, Governor, and Snell Equipment, Norwood. And in sports, Mel says there was a big game tonight, even though it's still early in the NBA season. Anytime these two teams get together, it's a big game. Rivalry. What two teams is that? Uh, Boston and Philadelphia. Ah, yes. Let me tell you about it. A key Atlantic Division battle tonight in the Boston Garden between the Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers. The Celts won this battle tonight, 110 to 103. In the first quarter, Julius Irving will follow his own miss with a basket right there, 12-10 Celtics. Second quarter, Scott Wedman from the outside for Boston. The J right there, 32-28 Boston. Third quarter, Danny Ainge will score on the drive. Nice give and go, 62-60 Celtics. Kevin McHale will score with the tip-in eventually. The ball comes back to Walton. He'll throw it up, misses McHale with the tip-in. 74-69 Celtics. For you local fans, Lisbon's Rick Carlisle for 280-75 Boston. In the fourth quarter, Maurice Cheeks with the J, 82-79 Celtics. Sadell Treat will score for the 76ers right there with the jumper, 85-82 Boston. Danny Ainge with a jumper, 90-84 Celtics. Boston wins final score, Boston 110, Philadelphia 103. Elsewhere in the NBA tonight, it was Detroit over Golden State, 115 to 96. Washington defeated the New York Knicks, 102 to 94. It was Utah over Cleveland, 121 to 113. In the fourth quarter, San Antonio leads Indiana, 100 to 90. In the third quarter, Phoenix has taken a 52-50 lead over New Jersey. Just starting on the coast tonight, Houston and the Seattle SuperSonics. Turning to college basketball's top 20. This game will be later on tonight between number four, Kansas, and Pepperdine. That's the NIT tourney at Denver. In the second half, number 10, Louisville, leads Miami of Ohio. That score, 52 to 39. Number 12, Kentucky over Northwest Louisiana tonight, 77 to 58. Number 13, Notre Dame, 79, St. Joseph's of Indiana, 49. In the second half, number 17, Washington, leads Texas El Paso, 64 39. Just starting, Nevada, Reno at number 18, Nevada, Las Vegas. The Philadelphia Phillies have named Tony Taylor to manage their Utica Farm team in the New York Penn League. Taylor was an infielder for three major league clubs, including the Phillies. 
Light action in the NHL tonight with just three games to report on. In the third period, Quebec leads Buffalo 5-4. to four. Pittsburgh over Winnipeg 8-1. to one. And in the first period, no score between New Jersey and Vancouver. The Potsdam College men's basketball team is hosting the Dr. Ken Gant basketball tournament this weekend. In the first game tonight, Ithaca beat North Adams State 72 to 45. Potsdam won the second game over Clarkson 101 to 46. Potsdam will meet Ithaca in the championship game tomorrow afternoon at 3. The consolation game starts at 1. In college hockey tonight, Clarkson and Cornell skated to a 3-3 overtime tie. Clarkson is now 2-2-2 overall. Colgate over St. Lawrence, 5-2. Pete Lappin and Andre Dolbeck scored for the Saints. They are now 2-3 overall. And it was Potsdam over the University of Buffalo tonight. That score, 4-1. It will not be a dull weekend in the world of sports, especially in college and pro football. Jerry Green gives us a preview. Tomorrow, the bowl committees will get serious as this is the final big weekend for college football. Number one Penn State will be at Panther Stadium to play arch-rival Pitt. Now, should the Nittany Lions win, a trip to the Orange Bowl is assured. Their opponent will be either number two Oklahoma or number three Nebraska. Those two play tomorrow in Norman for the Big Eight title and the subsequent journey to Miami New Year's night. On Sunday, there will be a championship decided in football, the Grey Cup in Canada. This year, it will be Hamilton against British Columbia for the title. Back down below the border, the Chicago Bears go for their 12th win against no losses. And on paper, it looks like a lock for Chicago as they host the 2-9 Atlanta Falcons. Chicago annihilated Dallas last week 44-0. Meanwhile, the Falcons shocked the Los Angeles Rams 30-14 behind the three touchdowns of Gerald Riggs. Another big matchup will pit the New England Patriots against the New York Jets. Both clubs are 8-3 and, and battling for the top spot in the AFC East. Another key game will pit first place Denver against the second place Los Angeles Raiders out in the AFC West. Jerry Green for CBS News. And Moose says go with the Patriots Sunday. Thanks, Mel. We'll be back with a look at the weekend weather forecast when the late report continues, so stay there. Get on your own. Make your house a home. Make old memories shine like new. Wix has all it takes. Wix Lumber has all it takes to help you design the perfect bathroom. One that's just right for your home. We've got all the materials and know-how to make your new bath turn out just right. Guaranteed. Make special dreams come true. Cause Wix has all it takes to build all you need. You work hard. You play hard. And when you're tired, you like to feel good by leaning back with your feet up. Spurlings has the most comfortable way, an enormous selection of recliners, wall savers, swivel chairs, and rockers from the country's leading manufacturers, and they're all on sale. Save Merry Christmas with a chair from Spurlings in Ogdensburg, Messina, Potsdam, and Watertown. Pick it out now while selection is at its peak. Delivery is free, no payments till next year. Make this the merriest Christmas ever from Spurlings, the chair people. What makes convenient? Kinda super? How about specials for the special season coming up? Canada Dry Mixers at 69 cents a liter. Gordon's Dips, all flavors, two for 99 cents. And for cleanups, brawny towels at just 59 cents. Yep, for just what you need, convenience, kinda super. You're kinda super. Convenient Food Mart is kinda super. Watertown Appliance and TV Center will be at Howard Johnson's this Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the largest microwave, VCR, and TV sale in northern New York's history. This Sunday, you can buy a tap and microwave oven for $79, a portable color TV for $169, an RCA color console for $389, a VHS video cassette recorder for $189. Sunday's the day. Howard Johnson's is the place. From 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., come and save hundreds of dollars. And tonight was a lot quieter than it was this afternoon as far as action on the roads anyway. It yeah. stopped Precipi snowing. Yeah, precipitation calmed down a little bit and yeah. the roads were able to clear a little bit too. And they will tomorrow. The temperature will rise a little bit more than it uh, did today. And that's good news as far as the driving conditions mm -hmm. are concerned. Right now around the state we are talking cloudy skies just about everywhere. Some light snow falling in Messina. Elsewhere drizzle 
except in Buffalo, where it's beginning to uh, clear up. Anyways, it's not raining, it's cloudy at the present time, 35 degrees in Buffalo, 33 in Rochester, 32 for Syracuse, 25 degrees up in Messina, a pair of threes in Albany, and New York City reporting in with a temperature reading of 43 degrees. Looking at our stats for today, our high temperature freezing, 32, the low 27, the record high on this date, 65 degrees in 1931, and the record low 6 in 1972. It is now 28 here in Watertown. The barometer, 29.97, it is rising, humidity stands at 97%, the winds are out of the northeast at about 4. The low spots in the nation this morning, Haver and Lewiston, Montana at minus 20 degrees, below zero in the northern plains. Checking afternoon temperatures, cold once again in the northern plains and Rockies, mild in the southeast, 30s in our area. Well, low pressure system with an extending frontal system moving through the state, touching off some precipitation during the day today. Now this system will start to move out of the way as high pressure builds in. It should clear up uh, things rather nicely after midnight tonight. Tomorrow looks to be a pretty good day with partly sunny skies. Temperatures moderating just a little bit, so it should get rid of some of the snow that fell during the day today. Let's take a look at our forecast for tonight. We do expect skies to continue to be cloudy. Traveler's advisory still in effect. Snow, sleet, or freezing rain a possibility. The low in the low 30s. Winds light and variable. For tomorrow, partly sunny. The high 35 to 40. Southwest winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunrise 709. The sunset at 432. Fair weather Saturday night. Good weather for traveling. Looking ahead, a chance of snow Sunday. Temperatures dropping through the 30s. Partly sunny Monday. High 25 to 30. Increasing clouds Tuesday. Highs uh, 35 to 40. Partly sunny. That's almost a promising weekend forecast. Anyway, it starts out well. Anyway, a chance of some fluffies on Sunday, Sunday, but really nothing too much to worry about. That's good. Thanks, Mel. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Niagara Mohawk's new power control center, one of the world's most advanced energy management systems. From the Niagara frontier to the borders of New England and Canada, this state-of-the-art system helps us deliver energy to you more efficiently than ever before. It's this kind of careful energy management that keeps Niagara Mohawk's rates among the lowest in America. Because the better we manage, the better you'll manage. For the finest Thanksgiving feast ever, the Price Champion is on your side with everything you need to make it a memorable event. PNC has the right turkey at the right price. And from our farm fresh vegetables to our sun-drenched fruit, count on the Price Champion for quality and freshness. For all your holiday entertaining needs, PNC is fully stocked and ready to serve you. From our family to yours, the warmest wishes for a festive Thanksgiving holiday. We do it all. Nine and a quarter for three years is... What, 2100 Close enough. Let's make it 2000 Has your bank been making more than its share of mistakes lately? Maybe the real mistake is banking there. At Marine Midland, all our people undergo a rigorous training program. And now we have a new extra effort program that rewards our people for superior customer service. Like keeping mistakes at a minimum and satisfaction at a maximum. Think about it. You can make it happen with Marine. That's the News 7 Late Report for tonight. Join News 7 again for the weekend evening report tomorrow at 6. Until then, for Mel Bustler, I'm Chuck Plumpton. Good night.